Hey guys, it's Matt with My Designs here. In this video, I'm going to show you how I use My Designs to set up and edit my data in bulk for my print on demand and digital listings. So let's get started. So I first want to point out what you would have to do if you were publishing, let's say, these um, five designs to Etsy. Uh, you would have to come in and manually type your title, your tags, and your description uh, for all five of these individually, and that's very time consuming, right? You know, to publish one design, uh, if you have all of your mockups and everything already generated, can still take you five to 10 minutes to go through and fill out all of your data and actually get it live. So we built my designs to be able to handle bulk editing and production. So with that being said, I'm gonna first show you an example of like I said, what we would have to do if we were doing this individually. And then I'll show you an example of what we can do with my designs. So first of all, with this first design, if I was typing a title, I would probably type always take the scenic route as that is the main keyword of this um, or keywords of this design. Um, and then, you know, I would continue on and, and fill out the rest of the title. And then I would come through and type out my tags. And obviously there would probably be some research that have got, has gone into this. Um, and then I would come in and fill out my description. And then I'd go to the next one and I'd do that. So that is how you normally have to do it if you're just doing one at a time on Etsy. So with my designs, like I said, we can do this where we work on all five of these at once. And five is just what I have, by the way. You can work on up to 120 listings at a single time. So I'll first of all select all because that's what we want to, I want to edit all five of these at the same time. And then I'll go to all actions, edit in bulk. And I'm just gonna touch base on what these actions are before we get started. So add to front is going to put whatever you type in here at the front of your title. So if we already had some data in this title field, this would put this text would be in the front. So you see a preview here. If we already had something typed here, this would make so that it goes to the front of the title. Uh, add to the end would obviously be the back of the title or the field that you're selecting. Find and replace we would be searching for something. This is the search for, and this is the replace with. Uh, find and delete would be the same thing where we're just finding um, you know, a phrase or a word or something that's in all of our listings that we want to delete. Overwrite is going to overwrite the field. You know, If we had something in here, it would overwrite it with whatever we're doing here. Um, and then clear field is obviously just going to clear all of the fields that we have selected. So let's go back to that. So there are fields here. You see a title, tags, and description. That is just a generic template that pretty much all print-on-demand um, listings require. So those are just your general ones. If you want to add additional fields, you can do that, and then they would pop up here for you to have the ability to edit. But let's jump into actually filling these out with some data now. Um, and this time, we're going to edit our title field. We're going to put some data in here. We're gonna to add to the front as it's a completely empty field. And then I do wanna to touch base that you can actually use variables um, with my designs. There's two different types of variables and the first variable we can use is actually in bulk edit. You can click this add variable button here at the bottom. And then you'll see this pop up. It's called var1. This is what it looks like if you were to actually type it out. Um, we're going to change this to app, which means you're pulling from the application and then the slots default, and we're going to pull the file name. So one of the practices I like to use, especially when publishing through my designs, is to always name my files what my primary phrase or my primary keyword is. So you can see an example of what this variable is right here. It says always take the scenic route. That is the phrase or the keywords that I would use for this particular listing. And I did it for all of my listings, all five of them. So like I said, I'm only doing this for five, but you can actually do this for up to 120 listings at a single time. So now that we've got that done, we'll just click apply to selected listings and then proceed. And you'll see it takes just a second. Now we have that data in here. So you'll see always take the scenic route and so the adventure begins, etc. And it did that for all five of my designs. So now we'll add a little more to that title. We'll go back to edit and bulk title. This time we're gonna add to the end as we already have data in there. So let's just say we wanna say camping gift or 
you know, maybe we'll say travel, adventure, t-shirt, you know, something like that. And obviously if I was actually publishing these, I would go on to complete my title, but this is just an example of what a couple of keywords would be to add on this. So now we can just click apply to selected listings again and proceed. And you'll see that it just added to all of these listings at once. So like I said, obviously if I was going to sell these, I would go add more, but just for an example, I'm, I'm not going to add any more to the title, but we will go back to edit in bulk. This time we're going to select our tags and then we're going to add the front. And let's say we want to do camping, outdoors, adventure. You know, like I said, I'm just thinking of a couple of different um, keywords that might be associated with the camping niche. Campfire, um, hiking, etc. So yeah, obviously I would fill out all the tags I could use if I was actually publishing once again, but we're just going to apply that. And you'll see once again, that that applied to all the selected listings. And while we're on the subject of tags, I do want to point out that if you want, you can actually use a variable inside of your tags field as well. So in the exact same way, you'll see it's highlighted red. That means there's too many characters and it's too big of a tag. But I just want to show you that it is possible um, obviously, if you had a much smaller, say we had camping was one of our variables, we could just add that variable in this way um, and then click apply to selected listings. I'm not going to do that. I just wanted to show you that it's possible. So next, we'll go ahead and add some data into our description field. And let's say that we wanted our description to, you know, maybe just include the type of product this is and all the specifications that go with it. So we'll just say edit in bulk. And once again, if I was actually selling this, I would add more to this description. It is just an example to show you guys what is possible. So I'm just going to copy paste something I had here. It just says product info, etc. And then it shows or just says some generic stuff, it tells you about what the shirts or, or sweaters are actually made of, etc. So then once we had our description filled out, we want to add it to the front. We would just once again, click apply to selected listings. And there you have it. So just like that, you would have all of your data filled out, um, you know, assuming you obviously you did all of the work. This is just partial, but it's that fast to do all of the work on 120 listings at a single time. Um, the way that I like to personally do it is to um, create collections where I'm only publishing specific niches. So, for instance, if I was working on 120 designs in a camping niche, then it works really good because a lot of the keywords are going to be the same, which is where the power of bulk edit comes in. So the last thing that I want to show you is how you can use the other type of variable that we have. Um, I showed you the first type of variable where you pulled the file name. This type of variable can pull any title or any field rather that you would like it to. So if I wanted to pull the title field, I could do that. Um, I have a new data set here that I named K or short for keywords. And I'll show you why I named it K. And then I have one and two, which normally this would be keywords. And then this would be keyword one. And this would be keyword two. Um, you'll see why in just a moment, why I just did K and one and two. And you can name these whatever you would like. This is just the best practice that I personally have found. So in this um, keyword field, you'll see we want to put some data in these so that we can use them um, or use those keywords across all of our listings. So let's go back to edit in bulk. This time we're going to select one. You'll see it's under K and one. We're going to add to the front and we're just going to call this camping as the, it's the camping niche. And then we'll apply that to selected listings. And you'll see now all of our um, listings have camping as our as keyword one. Um, and then let's go back to edit in bulk Add to front. We'll select two this time and let's just say um, adventure. I think that's another good keyword um, that goes along with the camping niche and then we'll apply to selected listings. So now you'll see we have that in our keyword two field. Um, let's jump back to our default data set here and then I'll show you why this is important. Now we can go back to all actions, edit in bulk. Um, let's say we wanted to add these keywords to our title field. So we would just select our title field. 
we would say add to end in this case. And I know we already have camping and adventure in there. Once again, this is just for an example. This is how you would pull, you can pull any keyword from any field or any data set you have in your collection. You do brackets like this. Inside those brackets is first the um, data set name. So it would be K. This is our data set here. That's what we call them. Default data set and our keywords data set. And then you separate it by a period and then it's the name of the field. So the name of our field is going to be one. And then we close the bracket. So you'll see here, now we have a preview, it's camping. That is pulling that keyword one field, K.1. So now you can see why I named it K and one so that we can easily do keywords that way instead of every time having to type keyword dot primary keyword or something like that. So now we can go K.2, close the bracket, and you'll see we have adventure there now. So it's it's very, very powerful to be able to use this um, in a lot of different ways. But once we're done, we would just apply to select listings and hit proceed. And now you'll see that is added to the end of every single one of our listings at a time. And let's say we wanted to add those same keywords to, like I said, I know these keywords are in our tags already, but let's just say that we wanted to add them to our tags. We would just go edit in bulk, tags, add to the end is fine here. And then we just go like this, k.1 and k.2. And like I said, well, we have to do those separate. I'm sorry, it's tags, so plus, and then we go, K.2. Um, the reason it's so important to be able to use keywords like this is because every listing you're working on um, may have separate keywords and you could have them change. Like, you know, for instance, if I came in and changed this one and said campfire and I'll do it in all caps, I'm changing the actual variable. This field, whenever it's edited, will update in real time for all of your listings once we click save. So now you'll see if I go back to the default data set on only this one, not all of them, you'll see that updated to campfire. So that does it on how to set up and edit your data in bulk. I hope you found this video useful and helpful. Um, if you did, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for further My Designs content.